Hello everybody, I am Fuzzy Face, and welcome back to another edition of this McLaren career on Motorsport Manager. Today we have got part 11 coming up. Last time out, Max Verstappen, he was beaten for only the second time this season. It was actually the first time this season we, that we didn't have either one of our cars win the race. We were beaten by Sebastian Vettel. If you watched the last episode, you will know Verstappen was battling with Raikkonen. and Verstappen had a bad start to the race. He was down in like fourth or fifth place. He was working his way up for the through the field he got himself into second place but then he ran into the back of Kimi Raikkonen a little bit too overzealous with an overtaking maneuver he ran into the back of Raikkonen he damaged his front wing had to do a lap with a damaged front wing got into the pits came out he had to do a drive through penalty after that which handed the race to Sebastian Vettel Verstappen did really well anyway to get himself back up into second place in that race so pretty good a pretty good race overall other than Verstappen taking his front wing off his car by damaging Raikkonen. Raikkonen finished like 18th. He couldn't recover at all. Even though he didn't get a drive through penalty. Only Verstappen got the drive through penalty. He couldn't recover at all. But anyway, we're on and going with this season still. Verstappen is the champion pretty much. Pretty much confirmed. Schumacher's not really got a chance of catching him. Sebastian Vettel doesn't really have a chance of catching him. As it comes to the Constructors Championship. Well, we're pretty much there now. There's only a couple of races to go until we're actually mathematically confirmed champions. So I'll have to work that out and see where we're going to be at. But we've got a couple of sponsorships coming up. First place, 1.7 million seems good enough. Upfront payment though. No, because we are aiming for first place. Rexona are an old Williams sponsor. We'll put them on the car and then we can take this one. 500, look at that one from Texaco. 1.2 million pounds per race. That is an absolutely stonking deal. And we're going to definitely accept that one. We'll see what that does to the finances per race. What are we at now? 3 million per race and then if we can add the 1.7 million onto that we're almost at 5 million pounds per race if we can somehow get that so we're going to be leaving McLaren in an even better position next season but as we can already see the forecasting center has been built since the last episode so we can see the full the full race what it's going to be doing weather wise for the full race Monza it's going to work out actually in practice and qualifying then we're going to be able to see whether it's going to we're going to get any little light showers during the race or not so that's going to work out pretty well for us so we're going to be able to leave McLaren in a really good position. There's not much else that we can build at the moment unless we upgrade some of these bits. Although I sort of want to leave McLaren with a sort of a big war chest to do what the next team principal wants to do. Whatever they want to do with the team from that point forward. But we have got the new legendary engine built. It hasn't actually managed to get above the epic part that we built. Because if you've seen this series before, Paddy Lowe, we can get in him to add a legend a random legendary engine component to the car on the last build but it has only got us to the same as this one instead of adding the plus 90 or the plus 50 like i was hoping it would do it added the one that was just basically all reliability which if i were if i'm honest i knew that is the one that we were going to end up getting so it got to 100 percent without having to do any work on it we're going to be able to get it up to 1360 which means we're going to ha be able to have two cars with the same engine which is going to work out pretty well for mick schumacher we're not going to be able to get the absolute beast of an engine like we wanted for max verstappen maybe we'll try another engine build maybe we will try the another engine build but at the moment we've got the rear wing building because we i hadn't actually built any rear wings up until this point i did manage to get one built but it's not good enough to go in the car at the moment it's only at 52 percent i won't risk it in the car but anyway we're going to be able to give this new engine to mick schumacher so if we give him this new legendary one because it's not quite up to the 1360 yet we've got max with the best engine at the moment so hopefully Mick's going to see some improved performance. We do have the best car overall. The drivers were currently improving. We're up to third now. We were about fifth when the season started overall driver-wise. We've managed to move up. I'm thinking Mick's, yeah, Mick's moved up to four and almost a quarter. Max has got up pretty much all the way to the four and a half stars. So both of these are going to be five stars. They've both got... Oh, Mick's only got four months contract left. Um... We're going to put an offer in here because I do want him to be with McLaren next season, even though we're not actually going to be here. Should we give him... No, we'll give him the... Oh, if we give him the equal status now, well, no, we'll do it a little bit towards the end of the season because he's going to start getting unhappy if we start to... Because he's going to want the same car as Max Verstappen and we're just seeing how quick we can get our quickest car to go at the moment. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do anyway. We're going to accept this one from Rex Owner. And it comes down to 4.3. We don't actually get all of that because if we do come first, then we're paying out bonuses to the mechanics. I don't think we actually pay out any bonuses to the drivers, do we? What? It didn't say anything for Max there, did it? 
No, he does. He gets a £120,000 bonus if he comes first in qualifying and the race. He gets double that. Mick doesn't actually get any bonuses at the moment. So, yeah. So, we're going to jump into the race. We're going to run practice and qualifying off camera as we usually do. And we'll be back in a second to go through the grid. So, here we go with the grid for the Italian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen gets pole just under two tenths of a second quicker than Sebastian Vettel. Hopefully, Max Verstappen can get a good start today. He had a pretty poor start in the last race, which dropped him down to about fifth place after the start last time. But anyway, the second row of the grid is made up of Mick Schumacher in our McLaren and then followed by Antonio Giovinazzi in the second prancing horse. Then on the third row of the grid, it's an all Mercedes lockout of the third row. Nico Hunkerberg and Kimi Räikkönen in the fourth row. Sees Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull and Williams respectively. And then the top ten is rounded out by Lance Strong in the Williams and the Toro Rosso surprisingly getting into the top ten. But I'm guessing that's down to the weather pretty much because it was raining in Q1 and Q2. There was a bit of rain in Q3, but Q3 rain came early on, so it didn't really upset the way the AI worked on for their last run in the session. But Danny Kvyat getting into the top 10. Pierre Gasly in the Toro Rosso in 11. He did pretty well. I'm guessing he did pretty well for the rain as well because Toro Rosso have been pretty poor this season. I doubt they've made some massive upgrades at this point in the season, but... You never know, Esteban Ocon falls in 12th in the Force India, Sergio Perez in the 2nd Force India 13th, Van Dorn knocked down pretty much because of the rain in the 2nd Red Bull in 14th, Carlos Sainz in the Renault 15th, Valtteri Bottas 16th in the Sauber, followed by Marcus Ericsson in the Haas in 17th, Palmer in the Renault in 18th, Ferrucci in the Haas 19th and Felipe Nazza rounds out the grid 20th place, 10th for row. So hopefully we can get a good start here. We can go a long way on these tyres. It's only 16 laps and Schumacher gets off to a flyer as well and gets held up a little bit by Verstappen but a pretty poor start for Sebastian Vettel there but Mick Schumacher has made an absolutely flying start here. He finds himself going up into first place. We can just push these tyres all out. The weather's not that hot so even pushing these tyres out it's going to take a while. We're going to be a push before they get up to optimum temperature as well but Mick Schumacher has made an absolutely flying start here and we're going to it seems like we're going to be pulling away in our two McLarens here because Lewis Hamilton's made an absolutely stonking start. Managed to get himself a in front of Vettel Giovinazzi in front of the two Mercedes an absolutely flying start but his Red Bull we know is nowhere near as powered as the Ferrari so he's going to be holding up although it looks like Vettel's got past him but we've managed to open up about a two second gap over these two cars so what we need to do now is no we can go high mode we can go high mode because we don't really have to we can just pit at any time on these tyres and get into the pits so Mick Schumacher is actually doing a good job of holding Max Verstappen up here. So we don't really need to use any battery power yet unless we... And that is Vettel. Vettel's just gone off. Vettel has crashed on the second lap. No safety car it looks like. But Vettel has run off the course which should play into our hands here. Hamilton's dropped down to fourth. Nico Hunkerberg's in third in the Mercedes. So it's just going to be a, be a battle between our two drivers this time out it looks like. And we're pulling away. We're really pulling away here. We're still pushing these tyres. We can just go as long as we want. We want to try and open up enough of a gap that we can get in and out of the pits. Schumacher's going to be coming in first because he can't get as much life out of his tyres as Max Verstappen can. So it's just going to be a battle of who gets the sort of better pit stops from both our guys in this race. So we can just sort of let things roll along. Nico Hunkerberg falling back as well. I'm guessing he's started to turn things down. Yes, he has. Can we get... Ooh, his tyres are running pretty low, but the softs can go down to about 15%. He can get 8 laps out of these, so he's got nice fresh tyres. 7 laps, so we've got to watch it on the fuel a little bit. We've got to watch the fuel a little bit. But not much. We can go in overtake more because he's coming to the pits now. We might as well boost him into the pits. We'll do the same for Max Verstappen when he's about to come in. We're possibly going to be held up a little bit by traffic with Mick Schumacher here. He's going to be coming out. Where's he going to be coming out? into 11th place there's a little bit of a gap for him to work with so we're going to keep high we're going to go high mode on the ta on the fuel wear right so max now is coming in right we can go into overtake mode for him we can get him set up for his pit stop fuel him up for the seven laps do the same use his boost so has that has this worked out a little bit better for max because max is putting in an absolutely outstanding lap this lap Max is absolutely flying on this lap. So where is Max going to get back out? It looks like he's going to come out in front of Mick Schumacher. 
And just look at that. They nearly hit each other then. But Schumacher's got the run out of that corner. So Mick just gets out in front. But Max is going to get out. That's cause probably because he's using his fuel a little bit more. And uh, two McLarens battling with each other here. We're down in 8th and ninth, But being held up, who's that? Stoffel van Dorn in front. Right, so we'll use the boost of Mick Schumacher to get past these couple of little cars. We'll use the boost as well. Onto this little bit of a straight before we hit the chicane. Get Max um, second and fourth. We've got a Red Bull in between us who still needs to pit. Lewis Hamilton in the Red Bull needs to pit out in front. We're going to go high mode. We're going to go back to medium now. Just stretch this stint out a little bit. But we should be pretty comfortable from this point forward then. Because where is the next best car? Nico Hunkerberg's all the way down here. He's gone to a hard tyre. Obviously doesn't have any soft compound tyres left. Which works in our favour once again. There we see Daniel Ricciardo coming to the pit. Hamilton's in the pit. So we're just now way out in front. We'll just keep both our drivers doing the same thing. Together, just let them race with each other. We'll switch back to Mick Schumacher here. He's out in front. Max is actually catching him though. Max is catching him. So it's going to come down to the next pit stop. And Verstappen's tyres are a little bit better off as well. He's starting to catch up to Mick here. So how far down the road is Max? He's just there. We're going to see him coming at some point. And we're not going to do any team orders. We're not going to let one driver through and the other one not. If Max catches up, he's got to overtake on his own merit. But tyres are getting pretty hot here. But we'll just keep pushing. We're all right for tyre wear. We don't have to micromanage anything. At this point in the race, Nico Hunkerberg on these hard tyres is hanging on at the moment. That's because he's pushing his tyres a little bit more than we are. But he's starting to fall off now. And Mick is still 2.9. Verstappen can't actually close this gap now. The tyre's just about getting there. So should we get Mick in this lap? His tyres are pretty much going. So we'll get Mick in. He's coming in. He's going to do... He's going to be back out though. In a position. No, he can do another lap, can't he? We'll get, keep him out for the next lap. We'll try. We want him to come out a little bit better than fourth place. So we can use his push. His tyres are just about going to go though. Hopefully that's not going to be detrimental to what we want him to get here. Few options. Seven. He's still going to be fourth, isn't he? We'll try to get him far enough ahead that he'd get out a little bit better than fourth place. So we don't want him being held up too much. Although they possibly are coming into the pits anyway. He's not lost much time though. Right, so Mick dives into the pits. Oh, we're carrying a lot of fuel. We shouldn't have carried that much fuel, is he? But we'll put the fun complement of fuel in for Max Verstappen as well, just to keep things fair. And we can push this tyre as well. We can just get rid of this tyre. And can Verstappen actually get all the way around on this lap? He can. Right, so we're going to go soft. We're going to put the fun complement of fuel in as well, just to keep things fair. Just so he has the same amount of a pit stop as Mick Schumacher did. He's got a little bit more boost, so Mix almost 20 seconds behind. Not picking up any sort of time with the boost there, are we? Right, so into the pits we come. He's going to be pushing out of it. Where is Mick Schumacher? Is he going to get it? Is Mick going to be able to get back? It doesn't look like it, does it? Is Mick coming out? Mick gets first place. Verstappen slow in the pit lane there. Even with a really good pit stop. So it's just down to these two cars now, pushing all out. Who can go the quickest? We'll use both their boosts. We'll just get the boosts all the way out of the way. And just let them go from there. So who's going to be able to do it? Is Mick pulling ahead here? Mick is actually pulling ahead. No. Verstappen's coming back. Verstappen should be the quicker car. Because he does have all the best parts. But Mick is setting a really quick lap this lap. Let's just see what sort of lap times we get off this lap. Mick last lap did a 112. That's because of the... Verstappen did a 120 because of him coming out of the pits, didn't he? But... He's still going quicker here is Mick, although he's starting to slow down a little bit. His tyres go a lot quicker than Max, even with just a one lap difference between them. Mick just totally blows through tyres, whereas Max is a lot better at hanging on. We've got enough fuel in this car as well to keep pushing like this. We should do. Yeah, we're coming up to the final lap, aren't we? So last lap, Verstappen did a one night. Yeah, pretty similar. So it doesn't look like Verstappen's going to be able to close this distance. The big story of this race was the amazing start from Mick Schumacher. Verstappen is coming back a little bit. I don't think it's going to be enough though. We hit the final lap now. Zoom in on Mick. We can see 
Verstappen is catching. Should we go to Verstappen's view? I will see Mick go across the line this way. 1.8. Verstappen is gaining, but not by much. We might as well use all the boost to put in a last couple of quick sectors. They've both got the same amount of boost left, so it doesn't really make a difference to the cars. Hitting the chicane. There's only one more chicane to go. 1.8 seconds. Verstappen's not really closing the distance anymore. So we'll switch back to Schumacher to see him come across the line. Here we go, coming up to the line now. And there we go. Mick Schumacher wins his second Grand Prix of the season. An amazing start from Mick Schumacher there. Crash from Sebastian Vettel. Just let us just let us just send our cars around and just race all out and to see what happened. Verstappen, even with the better parts, couldn't quite come back at Mick Schumacher there. Which is surprising. All the car is not that much better. There's only a couple of points in each area. Maybe like 10 to 20 points in each area. They do have a very similar engine at the moment. Mick Schumacher's engine is going to be equal in the next race as well. So a really good start there for Mick Schumacher. Sees him pick up the win. Max Verstappen. Even, I'm guessing just the undercut worked for Mick Schumacher. But he was in front about that about that time but if Verstappen would have been pitting first maybe he would have come out the victor maybe the undercut just about worked for Mick Schumacher because both times he just managed to get out especially that first one he did come Verstappen came out of the pits in front of him but Mick Schumacher was carrying the momentum momentum into the corner and managed to get past him held on to the race from there Nico Hunkerberg demoted two places after using a legal part so Hunkerberg goes down so Ferrari are gonna have dropped off now as well Probably going to have knocked them back from second position. Lewis Hamilton picks up a podium as well. So not bad from him. So Sebastian Vettel still third. Hunkelberg fourth. Lewis Hamilton moves up into fifth. Giovinazzi moves up into seventh. I see Ricardo drop one. No, so Ferrari still stay ahead. They've got a 34 point gap over Red Bull. We've got a 210 point gap over Ferrari. There are five races left. Which is 200 and... What is it? 200 and five races. 215 points, I think, isn't it? So 43 points per race over five races. Yeah, 215 points can be picked up. So we're almost there. So after the next race, we're not mathematically confirmed champions at the moment because Ferrari could still win two every race and we could still finish outside the top 10 in each race. I know that's not quite what's going to happen, but it is possible. It is possible because anything is possible. But as we know, that is not going to happen really. So, yeah, we're pretty much champions. We can be confirmed champions after the next race. We get 4.4 million coming into the bank. An absolutely astronomical amount of money. A good win for Schumacher though. So, an excellent race there. Pretty much brought about by Vettel crashing out. We had a very comfortable 1-2 finish. We have been pretty nervy in recent weeks with Sebastian Vettel being pretty close, but that is our 10th win this season. Ferrari only picking up one win. Mick Schumacher's second win of the season. Max Verstappen's got eight. We've got Singapore coming up next. I don't think we've got a vote coming up. No, five weeks left to the next vote, which is for short qualifying sessions, which is neither here nor there, but we'll finish as we usually do with the interview. Your two drivers were fighting away, so it's just one about uh, team orders, and we regret. I do not regret not giving team orders. We never do unless one car's a lot quicker than the other, as we saw Mick Schumacher and Max Verstappen pretty evenly matched here today. Yeah, so pretty evenly matched. We've got a brilliant amount of money in the bank. HQ coming along nicely. The brakes R&D facility coming up to Lamity Center. Simulator and wind tunnel all should be finished by the end of the season, so we'll leave the McLaren in a nice, strong position. We've got the rear wing. Uh, almost built so we'll be able to get that in the car hopefully for the next Grand Prix we do have another rear wing so both both drivers both Mick Schumacher and Max Verstappen will be getting new rear wings for the next race we do have the best rear wing anyway so we're just improving on that but anyway that is it for this episode if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button hit that like button give this video a thumbs up leave a comment down below all the usual razzmatazz but until next time I will see you down the road in Singapore for the next Grand Prix and goodbye